Mr. Spiro. I will be your substitute teacher for today's science class. This is my apprentice, Mr. Craig. Although there are millions of compounds out there, almost all of them can be classified into two groups, molecular and ionic. Today's lesson will be on ionic compounds. Does anyone know what an ionic compound is? Yes, everybody together. Go, go, All of you, go stand in the corner. So 
Epsom crystal salts absorbed from the water and became saturated. If this happened, it would have changed the physical state of the, of the Epsom salt crystals. The new crystals would look more individually distinct, longer, and larger. Let's see if our Epsom salt experiment worked and the ionic compound crystallized. As you can see, the experiment did not go as well as we hoped it would. Some crystallization did, did take place, but not to the extent which we wanted it to be. There are many possible reasons why our experiment partially failed. First, it could have been that the original Epsom salts that we used were too old. Second, the water could have not been pure enough. The ideal would be pure bottled H2O. We used tap water. And third, human error. Along the way, it is possible that Mr. Craig or myself messed up. For example, maybe we did not boil the water properly or we used improper kitchen supplies. In conclusion, when the salt is placed in the water, the negative and positive ions separate. The Epsom salt forms positively charged magnesium ions and negatively charged sulfate ions. This is reversible. So if the water is taken away by evaporation, the ions form the Epsom salts which will combine to make larger crystals. I hope you've been taking notes on this. For homework, I want you all to do pages 200 to 237, and tomorrow there's gonna to be a test on all of this.